Today, friends, we want to talk on the subject of fear, worry, anxiety. This is one of the greatest problems of the human heart, fear. And Satan controls people with fear, and this is one of his greatest instruments. Today's worldwide virus epidemic uh, has been an instrument of fear, but it's overdone in some places. Well, faith must be greater than fear. Which one are we going to choose? Listen to this promise. Uh, it's for those who have faith in their heart. In Psalm 91, verse 9 to 11. Because you have made the Lord, even the Most High, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. What a wonderful promise. When plagues came upon Egypt, remember, God protected his people from all those plagues. But in these last days when Antichrist is here during the last three and a half years, he controls the whole world with fear. He controls the world economy. You can't buy or sell unless you submit to him. You could be put to death if you don't sell your soul to Satan. So fear is one of Satan's greatest tools. But we must be people of faith and fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life as it says in 1 Timothy 6 verse 12. Fear is actually a picture in our mind. It's a negative picture of failure, disaster. But faith is also a picture of victory. God's going to take care of us. I don't know how. I don't know how the Lord is going to do it. But I know faith is, uh, faith is going to be our answer without faith. It's not possible to please God, as it says in Hebrews 11.6. So let's read that. Without faith it's not possible to please Him. For he that comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Hebrews 11.6. Faith operates in a soft heart, but a hard heart can't believe. We are told in Galatians 5 verse 6 that faith operates by love and a soft heart. But an untrusting skeptical heart does not have faith. Faith works by love, so let's keep a soft believing heart. In Philippians 4, verse 6, it's not a suggestion, but a command. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. This verse is saying, the Lord is saying in this verse, don't worry about anything. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Let your requests be made known to God. Pray, have faith, and thank Him in advance. We are also told in 1 Peter 5 or 7 to cast all our cares upon Him. We are not to carry all these worries and concerns. Give them to Jesus. In 1 John 4.18, we're told that perfect love casts out all fear. Fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Let's ask God for a new revelation of his love. It casts out fear. God's love and kindness and assurance casts out all fear. Jesus tells us not to worry about tomorrow. Do not say, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or where? O ye of little faith, 
in Matthew 6.30, but in verse 31, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? Wherewith all shall we be clothed? But seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We are not to worry about the future, and yet many Christians do worry. So let's remember Psalm 118, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do to me. Remember Psalm 118, verse 6. And Romans 8, 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? The confession of our mouth is so important. Let's talk now about the power of our mouth, our confession. Often the answer to our situation is in our own mouth. Many times when we pray or preach or prophesy, the Holy Spirit is speaking through us, not only to everyone else, but to ourself. A man's message first is to himself. Our confession must be from faith, not fear. Let's look at Psalm 37, 25, where David said, I've been young, but now I'm old. Yet I have not seen or ever seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Even as an old man, King David declared, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for food. I've never seen the righteous starving to death from hunger. God has always provided. Well, in Isaiah 54, 17, it states, No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Psalm 34, verse 4, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 34, 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Thank you, Lord. In Psalm 138, verse 8, the Lord will perfect what concerns me. God will bring an end to the problems I'm facing, ultimately. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 2, verse 4. Praise be unto God, who always causes us to triumph. Paul continues, I'm confident of this very thing. He who has begun a good work is going to complete it. In Philippians 1 verse 6. All these are good verses to quote. They're excellent confessions. Let's remember Jude 1 24. And let's make this very personal. Now unto him who is able to keep me from falling and to present me, me faultless before the throne with exceeding joy. Then we have that beautiful verse in, I, in Ecclesiastes 3, 11, that he is able to make everything beautiful in his time. Sooner or later, God's going to work everything out and make it beautiful. We must never charge God with being insensitive or uncaring. Some trials last longer than others, but we need to keep our heart soft and right. He will ultimately make everything beautiful in his time. The Apostle Paul declared, For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Philippians 1.21 But in verse 23, to depart and be with Christ is far better. Romans 8.28, he is working all things together for our good. All things. The nice times, the difficult times, all are necessary. 
So don't focus on the negative. This brings anxiety. We need to confess what is positive and true. Well, according to Deuteronomy 23.5, God is able to turn bad things into good things. This verse tells us our God turned the curse into a blessing because the Lord your God loved you. This is repeated again in Nehemiah 12, verse 2. Friends, we need to check our thoughts. The Holy Spirit does not say negative, gloomy things. Not doubt or gloom or worry or anxiety or torment or discouragement. No! The Holy Spirit always is saying positive things. So let's remember, discouragement is always from something we are thinking. Are we listening to the right thoughts, to the right voice? Where are our thoughts coming from? It is so important to always be in agreement with God. So the Lord desires to perfect our faith. We learn something very important from Hebrews 12, verse 2. What enabled our Lord Jesus Christ to endure the cross? It was the joy set before him. He had a vision of things beyond this short life. Friends, this is very important. <clears throat> we need greater eternal vision. This life is very short. Without vision, we dwell carelessly according to Proverbs 29, verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, no eternal vision, the people cast off restraint or live carelessly. Jesus endured the cross. Why? Because of the joy set before him. It says, Jesus despised the shame. What does that mean? It literally means, oh, the price is Nothing compared to the eternal reward. He scoffed at the little pride, a price that he had to pay compared to the reward. Well, the price was absolutely nothing compared to the reward. This is the attitude we need when we're in trials. <clears throat> this will soon be passed. There's a rich, eternal reward waiting for me. Well, let's use Abraham for an illustration. He was willing to live in tents. He was a wealthy man. But why? Because he saw heavenly Jerusalem, new Jerusalem. He had eternal vision. He saw eternal rewards. So I want to read Hebrews 9, actually Hebrews 11, verse 9 and 10. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Abraham was willing to forsake everything. He had his eyes set on eternity. This life is very short. But you know, many people are too short-sighted. They're only living for this short life. Let's keep our eyes on the prize, not the problems, not the present afflictions. For a moment, let's define the word optimism. Optimism means to expect the ultimate good. But some people expect the worst. God does not want us to live this way. We need greater eternal vision. Let's read 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but love, 
power, a sound mind. God is light, in Him there is no darkness. 1 John 1 verse 5, in God there is no anxiety, no fear, no worry, no torment. So, we need to pray. Lord, fill my whole being with light. According to Luke 11, 35 and 36. Let's read that. Take heed, therefore, that the light that is in you be not darkness. If your whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no dark part, the whole shall be full of light. Lord, let my whole being be filled with light. Dispel all darkness. Let's talk for a, a, just a moment about martyrdom. In Luke 12, verse 4 and 5, I say to you, my friends, be not afraid of those who kill the body. After that, they have no more that they can do to you. But I forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him who, after being killed, has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say to you, fear him. Fear God, not people. Even some who are called to lay down their lives can have great peace. Because instantly, when they're martyred, they're immediately in heaven with eternal joy. So friends, there is good fear and wrong fear. Holy fear keeps us on course, makes us afraid to sin or to come short of God's purposes. It brings life, but wrong fear makes us sin and takes us off course. In Psalm 34, verse 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. God wants to deliver us from the wrong kind of fear. Lord, deliver me from wrong fear. Give me a holy fear, the fear of the Lord. Well, the peace of God, the human heart is looking for peace. There can be no happiness whatsoever without peace. Peace is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And as the fruit of the Spirit is developed in us, we have greater and greater peace. Again, uh, Philippians 4, verse 7 and 8, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Where do we lack peace? In our heart, in our mind, in our emotions, in our thoughts. The peace of God can guard our heart and mind. So let's close with this beautiful verse in Isaiah 64, verse 4. Oh, the unimaginable blessings that God has for those who wait for him. So let's be calm, let's be patient, let us fear God and not man, and we're going to have a wonderful eternity. Amen. Amen. God bless you.